You've all seen that in multiple games. You may love it or hate it, but you still try to beat it and you spend even more days playing your favorite game. I'm talking about the time. In this quick tutorial I'll show you how to create a timer, a stopwatch and how to use it in your game to count points. Let's go! So here I have a simple UI with the text in the middle and two buttons that will control the time. Our first task will be to create a timer. Click on the canvas, add component and type timer. Open it. Here we need to create a new variable that will store the current time. Type float current time. At the very start of our game we'd like to have some kind of number that we'll start with. So let's create a variable that will allow us to set the initial value. I will type public int start minutes. Then we'll also need to assign it here in the start method by typing current time equals start minutes multiplied by 60. That's because we like to store current time as seconds. Ok, the last part for now will be to link our text to display the current time. Because we'll be using Unity UI system, at the very top type using UnityEngine.UI. And then here, under the variables, type public text current time text. We like to have our text always up to date, so here in the update method, type current time text dot text equals current time dot to string. That way, each frame text will be updated with the latest value. Save the script and before running the game, let's change those two values. First, drag the object with the text from the hierarchy here and set the start value of our timer. I'll set it to just one minute for now. Ok, let's test it out. Press play and the timer should tell you how many seconds are left. Great! Now let's write some code to update it every second. Because we have those two buttons that start the timer and stop it, we need to create two new methods. Type public void start timer, open brackets, and below it public void stop timer, open brackets. To keep track whether timer is currently running, we need to create a new value at the top. Just before declared variables, type bool timer active equals false. Boolean variable can store true or false information, so it will be ideal in this case. I think you already know what should we do next with this variable. In the start timer, just type timer active equals true, and in the stop timer, type timer active equals false. The last missing puzzle is actually decreasing the current time variable each frame. To do so, in the update method, just above assigning the text, type if timer active double equals true open brackets, current time equals current time minus time dot delta time. First, we check if the timer is active, and if that's true, then each frame decreases the current time with the number of milliseconds that passed since the last update. We do that because even if you have set 60 frames per second in your game, there still can be some kind of timing issue when your CPU is busier. Time that delta time makes sure that the correct number of seconds will be provided completely independent of your CPU performance. Ok, that should be it. In your Unity scene, let's click on the start button, drag in canvas here in the onclick event, and finally from the drop down select timer, start timer. Do the same for the stop button, but this time select timer, stop timer. Now let's test our game. Press play and then click on the start timer button. And it works, but the problem is that the time is not displayed properly. What's more, if we stop the game and then change start minutes to higher value like 2 for example, our timer will only show seconds without proper timer formatting. The problem is a bit tricky, but fortunately there is a built-in variable type that will help us. 
at the very top of our script, type using system. And then here in the update, above the line that displays text, type time span, time equals time span dot from seconds and pass in current time. As the name suggests, this variable will store the amount of time, for example, 120 seconds. It allows us to easily convert seconds into minutes, hours, and so on. To use it, simply replace current time that to string with time dot minutes dot to string plus colon plus time dot seconds dot to string. Remember that you can get source files for all Unity tutorials by supporting me on Patreon. Link in the description. Okay, now let's save it, go back to Unity, and let's test it out. As you can see, now time passing looks great. You can even stop it and resume it whenever you'd like. But if you wait those two minutes, you can see that it starts to go negative. We can easily fix that by adding a new if statement here in the update method. Type if current time is lower or equals to zero, open brackets, and define what should happen. I will type timer active equals false to stop the timer. I will also run the start method to reset time. And finally, I'll type debug.log timer finished. Now, when I run the game, start the timer and wait two minutes, you can see that everything works as expected. Okay, now I will quickly show you how to create a stopwatch. Because it's basically the same stuff, I've just copied the scene, duplicated timer script, and renamed all the variables and the file itself to mention stopwatch. Because we always start from zero in the stopwatch, modify the start method and set current time to zero. That way, we also won't need the start minutes variable. Next, remove the code we've just created a second before that marked the end of the countdown. And finally, the most important one, instead of decreasing time, we need to add it. So replace here in the update method this symbol. Okay, let's check it out in Unity. As you can see, it easily counts seconds and later on minutes, but every stopwatch also shows milliseconds. So let's add them. Here in the update method, we need to type plus colon plus time dot milliseconds dot to string. But as you can see, this line starts to look way too long and we can use a shortcut. Remove all of this and type time dot to string and here, please type the line you can see on the screen. It basically defines how minutes, seconds, and milliseconds should be displayed with the columns in the middle. Great! Save it, go back to Unity, start your stopwatch, and it looks great. The very last thing I will show you is how to count points for your endless runner game. In this type of game, we don't want to show the timer itself, but a score value based on time. We can easily achieve that by multiplying lap seconds by some number. As you can see, here I've created a new variable called score and a new text called score text. We'll also create a new multiplier variable, so type public float multiplier and set default value of five. In this update method, type score equals current time multiplied by a number. Before all of that, type mathf.round to int and make sure that our calculation is passed as the argument. Finally, to make sure that text will be displayed properly, type score text that text equals score dot do string. And that's it for coding. In Unity, Make sure to assign score text to the current variable field, press play, start the stopwatch and notice how the score is smoothly going up. So that's it. Thanks a lot to my awesome patrons that support this channel. 
be sure to check out my other videos about PlayFab and Unity UI. See you soon.